let's get to it. So our story, um, our story starts in 1999. We left the Andes Mountains in the cold weather of Chile and changed it for the paradise-like beaches of Curaçao. Um, this today is, of course, our home, and we haven't looked back since. After being involved in many business industries uh, as entrepreneurs, we came to the conclusion that our passion was in the service industry. And it was in 2015 that we devoted all, all of our combined efforts to create La Boheme as a family. Um, at the beginning, it was not all uh, butterflies and rainbows, as you can <laughs> imagine. But do not get me wrong, we are a very united family, but we sure have different tastes and ideas. We all come from different disciplines, having a pedagogue, a sociologist, myself, a philosopher, an international business strategist, an engineer in civil construction. And uh, yeah, we sure have different angles to tackle every project, of course. The result, a very quaint, multicultural, modern, yet vintage bistro with a dynamic nature. Uh, by the way, I'm showing pictures here of our team because um, they they are a very important part of La Buen family and play an important role in what we do every day. Um, so let's get to um, the marketing part of it. Uh, with this background in mind, uh, I would like to, to, to go further. Uh, and this are the problems and the limitations that we had in 2015. Um, most of them, probably you would say, you would say that, yeah, that those are the problems that startup, uh, you know, are confronted with. But we opened our doors in very rough economic times for us. Uh, nobody knew that we were a restaurant, uh, what we were trying to sell, and where we are located. Basic problems. But we really started like this, without a menu, with only three tables inside, and almost working as a snack bar rather than a restaurant. And just to illustrate this, we only had plastic utensils during those times, and we sold mostly pastiches and cold drinks. Those were very rough times for us. The solution, we wanted to create a proper restaurant with such an, a distinctive look and atmosphere that people would stop to take pictures. Then we could get notice, we thought. And uh, here's a fun fact. My father is the one that made all the furniture and decor in our place. Then. We divided our target audience in four groups, locals, tourists for short visits, tourists for longer visits, and the working locals of Punda. The first step for us was to print our first menu, and we, we would go door by door with a sample of uh, our food plus the menu and uh, our phone number to measure our conversations. The result, this resulted in, in calls and uh, the first orders of, uh, and some repeating orders, of course. So it's pretty straightforward. We tried to generate value for our potential clients before we asked anything from them in return. We brought our food for free and let them know we exist. Uh, then we created a place where they could would like to sit for a coffee, a meeting, or uh, and you know to enjoy the decor or the passersby. It's something that it, it might sound pretty standard, but for us in the beginning, it was not. Um, for the tourist, we thought that they would uh, love to try local food and local beer. So that, that is what we marketeered for. Um, we, we started selling, you know, local food uh, and trying to sell the local beer. That was our hook, if you will. Uh, but we very quickly learned that there's no such thing as a generic tourist, right? So might share, have the same characteristics, but they are all different. And therefore, they also have different consumer behaviors. So nowadays, we don't sell pastiches and we don't sell proper local food anymore. Um, then we move on to the f uh, to the next problem, and that was that we are a very small restaurant. We still are. Uh, but back then, we were even smaller. And with two giant restaurants or caf cafes in the neighborhood opening, you know, the whole day, uh, it was for us very, very difficult to, to compete. We couldn't afford having different uh, people doing shifts. We were l working 12 to 13 hours a day as a crew of five, uh, and we couldn't keep up the job. Uh, and you know that the job doesn't stop when you close the doors. So the solution for us was finding the right time in the day where we could compete uh, or be more effective rather than average to mediocre during the whole day. So we opened for one year from 8 till t uh, 9 uh, p.m. Together, statistics and optimize our knowledge in this regard. 
we discovered that nobody was opening in the mornings, and that uh, it, it, <laughs> that Pumla was more like uh, you know a desert. Nobody was working uh, working in those hours. Nobody was walking in those hours. Maybe uh, some silly core stuff, but that's it. And we said bingo. That's the time we should focus on breakfast and lunch. Will be our uh, thing then. Uh, so the following step was. Um, that we knew our food was humble of humble quality and uh, we strive to serve honest food for fair prices but uh, we are by no means a five-star Michelin restaurant so we decided to stay in our lane in that respect but we improved on service that meant coaching our staff by workshops and investing in the constant development of their craft that is as baristas cocktail makers a smoothie specialist wine and spirits by men and women and and of course also for the kitchen staff as they and us are the ones in the forefront representing our restaurant so they should be well educated when you know uh, promoting our brand to customers um, and and that is when and, and during those times of research is that uh, that is when we realized that not that we didn't want to sell food anymore uh, but we wanted to sell experiences uh, we wanted to have the best service in the whole island and we're very pleased to see the results reflected in review platforms like TripAdvisor. So we wanted to sell Curacao, its beautiful beaches, landscape, under and above water and partly uh, and party locations, of course. And that is when it became easier, as many tourists were already sold on the idea of Curacao and they would come back for more local tips and tricks. And the food became secondary. We were a restaurant selling food, but actually not. <laughs> and that is when we started creating new entrepreneur friends and more community ties. Think, for instance, of uh, Scuba Sal, our friends uh, from a scuba store that, uh, as divers ourselves, we, we very, very appreciate what they are doing. Out of a cura, cura cup, grapes and peppers. And to, and to get the best local food, we sent people to Marche di Punda, for example, even though they might not even know it. Um, and uh, and so many other places, of course. Um, this led to referrals from them to us and vice versa, uh, to then inviting local artists to paint live, to perform music live in order to create an even better atmosphere and service. Think, for instance, here about Memoria di Corso, La Rosa Tatuada, and many others. For um, Let me pass the slide. Uh, and uh, they probably don't... Uh, of course, this, all this business... Uh, let me see. Where, uh, yeah, um, this aspect of community building and a strategic partnership led us to work closely with Brion Beer uh, uh, also, and uh, I already named them Grape and Peppers. Uh, out of these relationships, we all, always try to push the the gaining of more education for our team through workshops and seminars, which uh, Flavina also mentioned as a very important point, um, which is the education and, 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 and the knowledge of your craft. Um, and uh, the next point we had as a problem was that we are still highly dependent on tourism. In the days we don't have a cruise ship in, 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 the, in the town, uh, back then and still today, we, 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 we see it reflecting in, in, in our sales. So uh, we needed to develop ways in which we could reach the local community even more, aside from the very successful Punda, Vite, Punda Vibes Nights. Um, and that's when enters customer loyalty cards, gifts and discounts for frequent visitors. And of course, getting to know our local guests in a more personal manner. That is by name, where they work, what they are usually, uh, what they usually order. And an example is when they call for, uh, we already know their voice. So uh, we don't, they don't have to say much. We already know what they uh, want to order. And even though we don't do deliveries, we still do for them. And this way we, we cannot create new, if we don't create new uh, new clients we still uh, devote our efforts to keep the ones that are still are still believing in us um in this manner we hope that uh, they keep coming for a second order for a third order and maybe create some referrals by word of mouth um it is of imperative importance to know them and to value them because they are the single reason that we still uh, are still in business um so I, I see that the time is ticking. So I, I go. I will go further with the vision, our vision for the future, um, and that is that we uh, want to devote ourselves to you know create more standard processes. We are very happy and very proud to to see our second restaurant you know flourish from the ground. That is Mistral Curacao, 
and um, who knows maybe we can uh, start a third one and a fourth one in the future but for now uh, it's the standardization of the processes the creation of even bigger and, and tighter community uh, uh, networks and uh, you know become greener that is something that I, I really I really hope we can do in the near future that is uh, the the probably yeah well the, reduce, the, the reduction of plastic use that is something that we really aspire to do and of course adding more vegan and vegetarian options um, I think that uh, that's it for my talk I hope I have been able to shed some light into what we do and uh, that you found some value in this I thank you all for your attention and if there's any light time left I would like to, I would be very pleased to answer your questions so thank you very much